Corsair have recently come to the market with a brand new keyboard and this one is called the K70 RGB Pro. Though, is it an upgrade over their previous K70 keyboards? And more importantly, is it worth your time and money? Let's take a look at this keyboard in depth and then give you guys the verdict. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and straight away in the box with the K70 Pro RGB is a detachable hard pressed magnetic wrist rest with a grippy surface and then there's a type C to type A detachable USB cable. This is two meters in length and is braided. This time around Corsair have also included PBT keycaps which are generally considered better and more expensive than the ABS keycaps, which the ABS will take a shine on the surface over time. The PBT keycaps won't suffer from this, though they are a little bit heavier, so they will have a different kind of typing feel to it. I'll let you guys have a quick listen to the noise this keyboard makes on numerous different keys, as well as including a much heavier all metal keycap for the lols. So the keys were very nice in my opinion to type on. There was very little wobble, as well as having a firm aluminium backplate gave for a very nice typing experience on the K70 Pro. Now there is the choice of four different styles of MX switches that you can choose from. The blues being the clicky and having double feedback. The browns having a single layer of feedback, but being quieter. And then the reds, which are a linear switch and are also quieter than the blues too. Then there's the silver switch, which is the one that we're taking a look at here today that has a higher actuation point than reds. They're basically the same switch, but one will be more responsive. That is the silvers, which are generally considered better for gaming. However, the Achilles heel of the silver switch is that it is prone for misking a lot more often than a red switch. Though moving on to the software, Corsair have included a debounce feature, which can mitigate the accidental double tapping that can occur from this high actuation point. And you can set this to a custom value. I find this very useful for me personally, especially when I'm typing and I'm going really fast. I usually, especially on a silver switch, can miss key quite a lot. So that debounce feature, having that included in the software is very nice to see. Also included in the software is the Winlock feature. Winlock feature also includes other options like stopping you from alt tabbing accidentally, as well as <laughs> stopping you from accidentally alt F4ing. I mean, come on Corsair, does anyone really continually fall for the alt F4 troll trick? You know the rules. But moving through the software, here is in my opinion where Corsair really start to shine above the rest of the keyboard manufacturers. The IQ software is extremely polished. And since the last time I have checked IQ, it just gets better and better. There was those two features that we previously spoke about, but also included is now the option for an additional 50 profiles, which can be saved on a hardware level, as well as each profile can contain up to 20 layers of custom control. So you can individually set the RGB backlighting on each key on this keyboard, as well as assigning things like macros, as well as changing the functionality of the keys on a software or hardware level. And seeing how this software also seamlessly link up to all your other Corsair RGB and work in tandem, it's easy to see that Corsair have been taking a very solid approach with their implementation of the software. In other words, you are not going to get frustrated using this software, but more importantly, they have the option in the settings to change the latency on the keyboard itself. And here's what Corsair is calling this the Axon technology. I'm personally on the fence of past a thousand Hertz. It doesn't really make a difference for gaming, but I mean, every single, I guess, point millisecond could make a difference in a tournament. So I guess this is where Corsair is aiming for with this keyboard, even though I'd say the mouse is much more important than having the lowest latency there. Though 8,000 Hertz, that's the maximum polling rate this keyboard can go up to. It does warn you that this may use extra power if you are on a laptop, so do be mindful of that. But when I did some latency tests here, I really couldn't extract 
a whole lot of a difference in terms of 1000 hertz versus 8000 hertz, but 1000 hertz versus 125 hertz, that is where you will gain the biggest reduction in latency. So speaking of latency, I believe this goes hand in hand with the other feature and that is full and key rollover support. So really no matter how many keys that you press in one instance, you won't get any key registers being blocked out. In other words, me spamming the keyboard with all my 10 fingers continually, I noticed that nothing was lagging and all those keys were registering when I was doing the spam test, which is a really good thing on the keyboard and it does test to the 100% anti-ghosting that Corsair are advertising. Then the final thing to go over is the nine additional media keys. And I guess the ninth key, you're probably like, Brian, there's only eight keys there. There is a ninth on the back and that's called a tournament switch, which if you press this, you will change the keyboard to tournament mode. And pressing this will then revert the keyboard back to a base mode with only one layer of RGB lighting that is static and also disabling any custom macros, whether on a software or hardware level, basically to minimize the internal processing of the keyboard and give you the best competitive edge if you are, of course, in a gaming tournament. Then in the top middle of the keyboard, there is the Corset RGB logo. And besides that, you've got your LED indicators for things like num lock, caps lock, and scroll lock. Though if there's one thing to critique here, I would love to see Corsair enable in the software the ability to change that logo, say with an LED readout of things like the time or maybe CPU or GPU utilization. I feel like if they did this little tweak to the keyboard, it would make the K70 RGB Pro perfect. So that's really my only critique with this keyboard. And with that aside, here is the verdict. I think if you are a competitive gamer and you're looking for the absolute end game features, and now I will interlude here and say, me personally, I'm not an end game gamer. I'm not going to be pro anytime soon. So this keyboard and the extra features it offers is really not going to change my ability, especially at FPS, to go from mediocre to pro. As opposed to RTS, it's really not going to do a whole lot there either, especially when I'm playing different games. But if you are a pro and you are going for the at most best performance in games, then something like this can be a tool to help you get to your best level, just like a pro athlete would get the best shoes for jogging the distance, even though they could beat me at jogging with their bare feet. And even if I had the best shoes, it wouldn't make a difference. So with that example aside, I will say personally, the K70 RGB Pro is one of my favorite keyboards that has come through here, period. And I think it's the best keyboard that Corsair have brought to the market to date. Extremely polished, feels very durable. The PBT keycaps, as well as that software and internal processing are all second to none. Look at those extra little settings and features added on the keyboard, like the debounce, like the win lock, and also like that tournament switch. It's easy to see that Corsair are paying attention to detail with their keyboards and it does shine with the K70 RGB Pro. So I love it when companies do take things and say, hey, what doesn't someone need? But if they had it, it would make their life easier. So it's really easy to see why Corsair wanted me to take a look at this keyboard. And I'm glad I did because now I have a new favorite gaming keyboard here at Tech Yes City. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button for us and let us know in the comment section below, what do you think of this keyboard? especially at its given price point. It's coming in at 170 USD. We're in Australia at 250 Aussie, which I feel for the money and the features it offers is a pretty solid price. Love to hear what you guys think in the comments, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Mona. And they asked, do you think that the i7-12700F is the gaming king with performance and productivity? Well, the question asks about the Gaming King, but then talks about productivity. But I will say one thing, the i3-12100F, 12400F, and 12700F are my three main CPUs at the moment that I would be recommending to people for pure value for money. I think if you're just gaming and you wanna get something like maybe the recently massive price dropped 3060 Ti and 3050, for example, or an RX 6600, then a 12100F will be a great choice as well as a 12400F. I feel like those two CPUs, depending on how high you go on the GPU, are going to be very good value for money. But then for productivity, and especially for things like editing videos, maybe doing a bit of simulation or whatever you need to do, 
the 12700F is going to be a very worthy purchase. We've actually got a 12700 build coming up here on the channel very soon. Stay tuned, I hope that answers that question. And if you wanna see that video the moment it drops, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. And also if you want some behind the scenes access, for as little as a dollar a month, you can get those Tech Yes vlogs where we go into a lot more depth, especially with Techonomics. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out for now, bye. Oh, 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 oh.